What's up folks, TrevCG here with Mono Red Devotion in Explorer. Taking an advantage of how good Red actually is, the recent edition of Idol on the Great Revel, which supplements Bunny Tramistry, giving you a couple of different Red Red 2 drops, and trying to leverage Fnatic and Morgus to do your opponent a bunch of damage for the amount of devotion you have in play. Um, now, the nature of this Red deck is a little bit different. We're doing some things going a little bit bigger. It's a bit more of a, a big Red deck, per se. Um, and so, at one, we just have Monastery Sister and Soul Scar Mage. At two, we have the Bunch of Emissary and the Eidolon on the right level, which uh, is a, is a you know, tiny bit of a non but you're okay. You're like, we want the Bunch of Emissary for the Devotion. You get to play an extra spell with it, whether it be an extra one drop, a lightning strike. Uh, we've also got Bone Crusher Giant, of course, uh, at three. The one of the things with this deck is you get to play like the best red cards of the format, be like Eidolon, Bone Crusher, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. And now Fable does some interesting things in this deck, so you have a bunch of nice things to copy. Um, whether that be Fnatic Amogus, which is obviously kind of the dream. Um, but hey, it also lets you loot really extra lands, does all the things that Fable normal does, normally does. It's it's pretty excellent. So four Burnish Giant, uh, best removal spell in the format, kind of Fable the Mirror Breaker, and then four copies of Anax, which obviously provides devotion, but also a great aggressive creature. <clears throat> because you normally get to follow it, have it following a Red Red 2 drop, it's always going to make the tokens if they decide to kill it instead of one of these. Um, and then, yeah, cancel devotion for Fnatic. And then also, obviously, is the, like, main carrier for Emily, which was a couple of, a couple of copies of at the top end. Um, you might be thinking, like, why no Torbrand? And the reason why is because Fnatic Amogus costs four and Torbrand or Kozo costs four, and we don't really want to have eight four drops in our mono red deck. Um, and we're trying to lean into Fnatic Amogus here and kind of just 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 clock our opponent with it. Um, one of the nice things is that you get to play a bunch of lands. Uh, uh, well, utility lands. So four down on the bugbear, four copies of Ranap Ruins, fairly straightforward. We've got the once a Eleven mountains. I've got two two copies of Nyctos here, um, and they're kind of interesting because obviously, like, hey, you have got twenty. Wait, fifteen. Yeah, twenty two lands is where I landed here. Um, so the Nyctos are kind of a little bit more like spells. You can loot extra lands away to Fable. Hitting three is actually really, really important. We actually do want to hit um, land four in this deck for Fnatic. Nyctos in particular, that gives you mana to either go have like big Fnatic turns, kind of power out, just activate multiple land lands, um, going off with Fable. Uh, you often want to be double spelling, and yeah, it's like a nice to have, um, and it's worth it. Uh, it's the sideboard. So the first thing I want to draw attention to is this package of challengers down here that we're boarding into versus mid range control decks. Two copies of challengers to kill, along with three copies of torture, Ch challenger torture defiance. And I said something about lots of four drops, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna kind of trim and cut a little bit to make room for these. In the in those matchups, you just want a, 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 a more consistent sort of like card advantage and just to let you grind a bit. Um, versus aggro, you've got a couple of copies of F Play With Fire along with some extra removal and a braid and two copies of Obliterating Bolt. And you can kind of trim and chop a bit. Because we're a bit of a slower red deck versus aggro, sometimes you end up wanting to cut that on the revels, great revel, especially when you're on the draw. I'm going to be under a ton of pressure early. Um, and so you kind of bought into a little bit more of a controlling deck. Uh, well, in that match, in the matchup, you take a control. You, you are the uh, uh, the control, and they are the beatdown when you're on the draw. Um, trying this one copy of Vestility is just because there are like uh, decks playing elves or or like spirits where you can just like pick things off with it. Um, and then along those, we've got two copies of Running Volley, uh, Angel Spirits, Grease Fang, the things, and a couple of Fries as well, which are particularly nice for decks that are like, wanting to like board into like. For example, out of blue, white, when they want to board into like Lyra Don, bring it. You get to have a kill spell that also kills this fairy. So it's not completely dead if they don't have one of those creatures, but like, you have some creature threats still in your deck to deal with the Lyra or the Bane Slayer. Um, so that's pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. With that being said, Mono Red Devotion. Let's head into some rank matches. And this is normally the bit of the video where I say, hey, if you like Explorer stuff, um, do you like and subscribe? Obviously, Phyrexia coming out in just a minute. Literally seven days it pre releases now um, for me. And so, yeah, I've got a ton of stuff planned. And if you've got any decks you particularly want to see out of the gates with Phyrexia coming out, let me know in the comments. All right, to ranked matches. All right, let's try first ranked match. Interesting how this compares to like other red decks. But it gives your opponent, it, it, often you're taking your prize, your opponent um, completely by surprise when you make a fanatic and you're all of a like don't them for like six or eight or whatever. Hmm. We're playing more lands than usual. All right, on the mulligan. Oh dear. This is a little rough. We're on the play as well. We kind of just have to go to five. We've just seen two just only done on the bug bear hands. Okay, we hit lands here. We also have Eidolon. Oh, we're going to keep, but then I think we go. 
burning tree on the bottom. Oh, actually, no, we have burning tree, burning tree giant, which seems like the, like a very nice combo. And we're ditching Fable. Oh, I really want to keep Fable around. So we can either go keep idle on Fable or keep burning tree, bone crusher. Hmm. I'm leaning towards keep these two. Get rid of these. Bone crusher is not great. It could just be leave the idol on and get keep bone crusher. See this? That gives us still have an interaction piece. Yeah, okay. We got there, we got there. So though, Mulligan to five on the play is pretty rough. Pretty rough. See what our opponent's on. These sleeves are I've not seen these. Neat. Oh maybe they're one of like the secret layer ones. I think some of the secret lab products come with like sleeve coats and stuff, cosmetics for arena. My voice is a little shook at the minute. Ooh, the spirits, interesting. Well, that's what the assumption is. Um, I have to kind of pretend like they're going to have a one drop, so I'm just going to attack here without play and, and pass without playing the monastery suspect. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. They didn't have the one drops, we get like slightly punished. This line is particularly good versus like, alright, they're gonna end step a, a spirit and then untap, put a curious obsession on it. That's kind of what we're trying to prevent here. Um, as it is, we're kind of priced into just keeping holding, like staying with us, trying to hold up. Um, should have done with hitting the third land here. You don't let this resolve. I'll let them untap with it. This is what I was playing around the first time. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We're going to try and burn Christian here. But now they do have uh, access to, like, Geist Light Snare. Or Lofty Denial. Alright, Spell Pierce is the name of the game. I'm going to deny them some mana, Do you really want to hit a third land? Okay, we hit a third land, but it's not a good one. Well, it's not an untapped land. Would have been a nice opportunity to jam Fable now. But hey, we're still kind of in the race for now. Yeah, the Mulligans is pretty particularly brutal with spirits because they want to like kind of like one for one of your spells away and then catch back up with Curious Obsession. We just unfortunately only had one interaction piece with us. If we have two the ideas that we get to go, okay, end step or do the or in response to Bone Crusher and then untap to use another kill spell. But we're also a little bit light. I'm just gonna lead Fable here. Which at least goes to decent attack, even if they have a counter spell. Ooh, it does resolve. That's promising, because we're still on fifteen. They're gonna and set flash in a creature likely, and then untap. As long as they don't have like three lords. Oh well, if they don't, mm. if they like, yeah, if they like untap the lord, it starts getting really, really awkward. But um, for the time being, we're okay. Fifteen is a fairly safe life total. Twelve is is is, is much less. They've drawn a bunch of cards as well. We're like hugely open to going. Okay, cool. So, post combat is pretty bad, man. Maybe we just drew that. That does block really well, too. Um, I'm not going to have time to play this fable. I kind of want to keep this against them, though, because it's the full time for the fanatic. But it also might not resolve. Um. Four, five, six, seven. Do they have like a rattle chain or something? Does they have like another lord in hand? There's another line where like making the table is totally fine. Maybe the fanatic's the pipe dream. Maybe I don't want either of them. Okay, we drew a spell, which is all right. 
We're gonna go to Climate Combat, make some attacks, see what our opponent does. The treasure lets us double spell here, which is actually super nice. I could have maybe looked to Fable, but I thought they might have some, like, trash and good combat. Uh, uh. I'm really focused on not dying, I guess. As opposed to be a little careful. Things gets loot. I respond to the Rail Chains kill Supreme Phantom. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the best chance I had. This really just the damage by the most. It's just like, if they have spell piss, we're... Oh, step out of the backs. Good. That makes 11. They still need a lord. Really? Yeah, like, if we try and lightning strike the phantom, then go to combat, we get absolutely blown out by the rattle chains. And yeah, they have the super second supreme phantom for lethal. That is fair enough. Alright, alright. That was rough on the multi five. There are a couple of decision points there we could have played it slightly differently. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I think I like these. To be fair, there's a lot of cards that we, uh, we, we can board, like, very controlling if we want to. The issue is, this is, like, one of the matchups where the larger stuff is not as good. Like, we can board in, like, 10 removal, 10 pieces of interaction removal. Like, the Fanatics are super slow and clunky here. Despite being really what we're trying to do. Um, Eidolon I like. Fable again, all slow and clunky. We have like, four Pyromancer. Uh, also has a double, which I think we can double up on. Feels weird, but I do like this. And then, um, on the draw, we maybe want to just change things a little bit more. Less attached to the blue. I think the blue ring bolts are the worst of these, just because they're sorcery speed. And we want to be doing everything at instant speed, which is when they're trying to do things. So, let's run it, let's run it. Go and play. Do you have lands? Lands and spells? We'll take it. We'll take it. Our opponent is not looking. Yeah, I just, I think, I think we just saw the mulligan like it's the mulligan three times. Um, I'm gonna run this back instead of switching things around again because we have so much one mana interaction now. That actually feel pretty good. And again, like. The Spirits deck is particularly good at punishing um, the more like clunky, expensive like four, like threes and four drops, especially when they're on the plane and get access to all the counter spells. So uh, much fa like faster than you have access to like three mana. And so, while it's what we're kind of trying to angle this deck to do, it's unfortunately not great in this matchup. Okay, this looks solid. Alright. They have a Wanderer. We're gonna try and like Burning Tree of Braid something here. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, they just have Creator's Possession. Alright. Might be rough. Are we gonna get put into the machine? Do they have Spell Pierce slash Guy Slate there? This is the game we play. He's my burning tree emissary. You burning tree, so maybe they just have spell piss. Maybe they have either. We can get an extra creature down here and then look to do things, but I think giving them more time is worse. And this is like an opportunity to get a free shot at the Asleen Wanderer. I think we take it. 
we're also like activating soul scar mage, so we're not actually missing out on damage. All right, they have a slip. That's okay. It does make the clock a lot faster, but we have a couple of creatures in play now. We can now look to go like, all right, mountain swift spear. Make some attacks of our own. The battle order is particularly potent because now when a spirit enters the battlefield, it gets a can it gets plus one plus one, which protects it from lightning strike. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, I almost want a lightning strike face. Um, I think I'm going to use one of these because this does kill the mouse wound wonder I'd rather use the Bunker Giant. Because also casting the three mana hide of it is actually just not, not, not great. All right, that's going to resolve. So we're going to clock them down to 10. All of a sudden, we have the pressure advantage. There is that rattle change, which would have absolutely blown us out. <laughs> Even, like, either way, I think would have done it. Now they've got five up here. Ooh, Haven. I don't know. Supreme Phantom, are they just going to double attack? This is down to seven. This is rough. Uh... I'm going to spell bin. so if we kill this, um, we're taking one, two, five. At least need a, uh, we're dead to the, to the haven. So we need to leave a blocker back. Ah, uh, so Oh, they can sacrifice the mausoleum wonder. Hmm. They're gonna allow it. They do. Now they still have the damage though, and we still have to absolutely respect this. Most I hope they don't make an attack. They were on seven. Yeah, this is rough. Maybe they try and play around some. The problem is if they can play around some, they've got they've got more element cards than that. And we are bad. Okay, anyway, well, that was pretty tough. This is I think one of the worst matchups this variation of red. So I'll see you in the next match. I think we should play three. All right, all right, all right. Back for match number two. Yeah, spirits is pretty rough. Certainly. Um. This version of the red deck isn't the best there, but it's not, hey, it's not the most popular deck on there. We're all right. We're all right. This looks pretty solid. We got lands and spells. We did have a mulligan to fight in one of the games as well. Also, versus Mono Blue. Okay. Okay. Plains, Ollenbach, Escort. I'll assume some variation of humans. I'll leave with a Dent and the Soul Scar Mage. And then next time we've got access to Bunker Strike and Lightning Strike. Things are looking pretty good. Ideally, we want to use the Stomp and we want to go like Stomp, Giant, Fanatic. Something along those lines. Ooh, interesting. Um, I don't really want to mess around. Yeah, the creature needs a counter on it to get life in this red symbol. I'm just going to stomp this away. And we'll head into the red zone with soul scummage. I'm liking the looks of things. We've got Lightning Strike here to interact. Like, if they find, like, a... Other facts. Ooh, okay. Left Tenant. And now everything is counters. Hmm. Oh, so this gives us an alternative angle as well. So this can give itself... Actually, but it needs a counter. So we can still kill the Left Tenant here. I'm leaning towards Swiss Spear... And attacks.
Something like this. The other thing is, while these give indestructible, they don't... Um, obviously the Soul Scar Mage gives minus one, minus one counters. This is fine. Alright, they're down to 14. They've got some, they've got some pretty nice creatures in play though. These are Vigilant as well. Make them annoying to block. Ooh, another armor block has got. Okay. And a Kibiris take down. Ephraims, do I want to just leave with a Fanatic? Takes a 40, does get blocked here. We are kind of stonewalled by these now. Um, yeah, they get fly thick as well, which is super annoying. We're well, close to be out of it, it's done. We could just make Bunker Giant, but I think I'm fine. Um, to be fair, the Bunker Giant is a 4 3 and does get not stonewalled by these TTs. Uh, <laughs> and then we hold the Fanatic and we'll have some modern motion in play. I think this is all right. Now we're both kind of playing off the top. I've got a few cards in hand, of course. Okay. Ooh, these cards can be from anywhere, but we don't have a ton of enchantments that are super relevant. So I feel alright about that. This also makes a 3-2. Like, eh. We could chuck some stuff in front of the old box, but I think that... I'm trying to think what we're drawing to. I don't feel like they have great attacks here. So I'm just going to make a Fanatic and pass for now. We can chunk our lives to down a bit more. But we're close to being able to like add to the dead of the bugbear, find close to lethal and finish them off with our map runes. New Cathar's nice. I guess they take the bone crusher giant? Yeah. Let's say the fanatic spells more damage. That lets them attack. At least. They're gonna tell everything, so go here. This now gets a counter on it, which means that this now can gain lifelink. I think I don't want to bother exposing this to this while we're blocking it. So I think we're just going to take six. Which hurts a little bit. Um, yeah, as I said, it should sacrifice to something. Alright, we go down to eight. Oh, some lifelink. Okay. Hmm. Instead of ice to sandbag a land, it doesn't let us like, activate. End of the bugbear, and we have like fables in our deck to draw towards. Back down to eight now. Hmm. Don't be in awkward position. I kind of want to attack with this. Worst to us, it's like trading off with one of these Ellen Bock so I kind of have to. Work through them one way or another. This way they gain two life. Yeah, we still get one of them off the board. They don't have another thing to trigger hopeful in a shit. Also, like, if we do draw into Fable, we don't want them to be able to pop with the hopeful in a shit. For free. This is actually pretty nuts. Um, if they can double spell, which is just a possibility. Also got a first strike, which makes it super hard to deal with. And now I do have to think about, okay, we've got a fable, but they have these. We have to remove both counters, we still get a 2-2 two -two out of it. That's okay. This is an awkward spot. If this clears, we get to try and Chuck cards away, trying to hit some removal. Would be nice. But I definitely don't want to cast two spells myself in the time. Not with the Moon Rage Breed out. It looks like they've got some other pieces. Okay, now they're thinking about popping. Um, yeah, okay, cool. I'll tell you Telegraph, but they're just going to be able to sit with the Hope Finisher cards and play. The important thing here really is double spelling before them. Well, not the not letting them double spell with the brute out. Okay, back at Fable. Um, do they not? Oh yeah, I'm done.
Alright. Is this why they're in the back? <clears throat> and then if they don't have other pieces of interaction, we get to start copying them for that again, Marcus. And obviously that's gonna lead to pretty, pretty fast to lethal. We'll see though. They might be able to double spell. If they double spell, take the Fnatic, that's still not that great, because then we get two creatures back if they, um... I think I'm pitching both of these. I don't really want the idol on. Okay. Burning Tree Emissary. I could also copy Burning Tree, that's a fun one. Yeah, they've still got this going on. I guess we're getting to the point where we can just start activating Eminap Ruins. Play this. Just sacrifice one of these now using the mana. Alright. So they've got two cards in hand. They're gonna look. They're gonna be wanting to double spell this Moon Rage Brute, which is okay. We've got a month of the Wall of Creatures, barring Brave the Elements, admittedly. Um, that might be okay. Sun Gold Sentinel and the Sun Gold Sentinel is a problem. But they've only got creatures with two powers at the moment, which means they need to activate the. Oh, they can activate Meteor Vault. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> That's one spell. Now the second one. Yeah, Annex. Alright, well Annex is pretty solid. This is fairly this becomes fairly straightforward now. Like uh if we untap we win the game. If they have two spells to deal with the reflection, with the get this to deal with the reflection, then we're in, in some trouble. Don't accidentally choose green. So, uh, Alright, we get there, we get there. Game number two. Um, you've seen a lot of this before. The Ember of these, the player flyers, the running volleys, and we'll think about these things as well. Um, and we're going to board out some of our more cards that seems to be a fairly slow draw from them i still don't really like these idol great rebels um but still like the bunny tree emissaries we have a bunch of things we can now double spell with um yeah and now we've got more interaction for things like brutal which will be interesting to see if they leave in or not other than that like fable was good there but it shouldn't be as powerful normally we might turn a copy of anax and then i was talking last time about how obliterating bolts are a little worse than the other options but um like all, all the other spells are more efficient, except like maybe a braid. It might come into play in some other end. But Annex, like, fine, a bit slow. Ember Cleave, Annex is like another combo. Um, but also like these challenges such as defiances, like we can't have too many fours. But they do serve as a very nice removal spell as well. What are we cutting down on? I think on the draw, because the way this is working out. Batting Swiss Spear. Um, and we're actually just, we're just going to play like a straight up like control deck early. And then look to out that even later on with Fable and uh, Fanatic. I am going to trim an Annex. Um, that's... I'm actually going to... And then we leave the Thermocleaves. Uh... I want to do this. Big red. All right.
This looks solid. With them on the play, the like burning tree and removal spell is oh, I was gonna say it's normally pretty good. We actually have the the nuts. We have the double burning tree hand. Um but hey. So I might not use this play with like oh. Uh that's fine. All right, off to the races. Demon arc. Yeah. Um. I don't know what if I want to attack. I think I do because we've, we've got a fanatic. We want to hit a land, but we're going to be able to lead off a fable. I think we just make these attacks here. So whether they decide whether they just want want to respect that I'm not that much. No, that's fine. We'll make a fable. Might take some damage here. We'll see how that looks. Tali is kind of annoying. Lieutenant's great. Uh, they're going to put the recruitment officer out of range. Um, I think I'm fine taking the damage here. Uh, I'm getting rid of this. The Tali locks us out a little bit. We can still. Stomp the Thali here. Doesn't leave them with some damage though. It didn't hit a land. Um oh though We're on thirteen, right? This leaves us the options of rending volley. I think I'm gonna Hmm. I think I just take the Luminar Casper out now, just in case they draw. Like, I don't know, yeah. That seems like the best possible action. Sounds of the Fable. They do have another Thalia. They have a Lightning Strike. They're going to attack. Um... We have to respect this a little bit, right? Which I need to leave back blockers. There is a line where they just like block the this with the Thalia, and then this is like. Four and then they take five. That's not good. I think we strike this down, go attacks here, then leave a bunny trailer sorry to block. Oh, Adeline's like one of the best possible draws, right? Uh, what do we have? We have fry. We can't fry plus I'm fanatic, can we? No. Uh, that's that's I'm dumb. I can literally do that. That's not lethal. Uh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, talk I'm talking rubbish. I ignore me. <laughs> I've never been good at math. That's also a lie. Alright. We got there, we got there. And having thought I'd play for a couple of turns threw me off a little. Alright, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, final win here versus Mono White, and I'll see you in match number three. Alright. Coming in match three. On the play? Ooh. Pretty solid hand. I like to think. Obviously can't play the idol on off the burning trees, but yeah. We'll see.
We'll be able to cast whatever we draw, at least. Save Mulligan once, twice. Oh, this is rough. Uh, I started off the video with a multi five, so I think that's fair enough. <laughs> that's a story I'm sticking to. Okay. It's one of the cards I'm like missing very much from Explorer the um the Bushwhacker fact. Reckless Bushwhacker. Got Surge um to let you I'll lead with the idol on. Could have done that the other way around. But this way, harder the counter. We managed to turn two damage into three damage into two. Respect that. Alright. Then attack for. Puts it down a. Well, before we get to the range, um, oh, okay. That is, I guess, how we drew it up. Okay. <laughs> this is a little bit more awkward. I want these fries. Because we kind of just, like, obviously we didn't see a ton, but we think it's just, hey. Um, oh, not the bolt. Blue, white control. Um, it, the, the cast sensor, it, it looks like blue, white. Um, so... Of those in things that we want to cut the lightning strikes don't get a ton of value. Some of the cards that are better against creatures are not as good. These amber cleaves get pretty miserable. Um, I think our plan is to try and go over the top with oh no, not over the top, but try and get them with like fable and stuff. So I'm gonna tick down on the number of annex. Actually, no, I shouldn't do that. I think we're just like on the board out all the lightning strikes. And then leave us just with these fries. Andrew Fanatic. I kind of want to just cut a copy of Fanatic so that we keep our curve a little lower. Um, I'm going to run this up. The devote, like, versus blue white, you're just not going to have as much devotion to play either. There's a, probably a case for cutting more of the Fanatics, but it's kind of what we're trying. It, it's, it's, it's what we're trying to find out, really. We'll see. We have, we have, we have plenty of threats here. I have another double burning tree start, which looks all right. And actually the center of the plug bear is going to serve us pretty well. If we're coming out of the gates quite fast, dumping a bunch of our hand, then uh, okay. now that they're on the um, play though, this can just get censored. Ah. Or not. This is all to say we don't have a thing to do next time, necessarily. Imagine we've had a reckless bushwhack in here, this would be eight damage. This is one of the it's just one of those cards that explorers just kinda of miss it. This if it holds, I think it might hold. We can't really do anything. We've got Fry sitting about. Kinda of chilling. Alright, fair enough. Okay, no fourth, no third line, no fourth line on that. Um, we attack first and then have a think. That was not necessarily the best time to play item on. I think I kind of want to play one of the fanatics here. Uh, I 
Cloud Hunt at least means you've got a lot of pressure in play. Maybe prompts a board wipe to make give us room to cast Chandra. Rather, this just gets like censored or ignored, essentially, and then you shouldn't tap her out anyway. Oh, they're gonna absorb, okay. And now, like, if they take a turn off to cast a fairy here, we can kind of get them with the fry. That's a tap land. Now we kind of do have to worry about Wandering Emperor. Okay. Uh, the, alternative, the alternative is that we just, like, go in with Den of the Bugbear. Which I think plays around... Ah. Uh, I don't know what they have. I don't want to expose the Den of the Bugbear now when they've got mana open. When they got, like, I don't want to get it like Wandering Emperor, do I? Opponent doesn't hit walkers. Oh, I miss Chandra being able to re redirect the Planeswalkers. That was a fun time. I'm just going to fill out of here. Spins the damage up. Okay, they got a 12. Like, so it's like memory deluge? Yeah, there we go. They play a draw spell. Let me see if they've hit a wrath or not. Always looks pretty good because it always feels like they've got a million cards in hand after they cast one. Field of Ruin. Okay, don't love that. And we've got double Chandra, so we kind of want to do that this turn. Do they have? They also have like Shot Typhoon. There is a Wandering Emperor. Um, it really depends if they're just going to make a 2 2 or not. Exile creature. I still got mana. I, am almost sad to see you go. I feel like they shouldn't have vetoes in their deck. Um, I was on a plus for mana for Fry here, but I'm not that concerned. I'd rather just do damage to face. Put him down. You have another Fanatic. If they make a 1-1, one, one, I think that's okay. I'd rather save the Fry for Teferi. Which will impact the game longer overall. Like, more, more impact the game more overall longer. We can also just down take the challenge on a token if they make one here. They could also go field of room plus the fairy, which would actually be awesome for us. Well, not exactly, but fairly good. Dream troll is much less chill. Um, we can maybe make them pitch some cards. Uh, okay. Dream Troll is really hard to play through, honestly. Um, this makes mana. Most is currently doing four, five. Um, I'll plus this. Uh, okay, Fable gives us a route. I think we cast this. It does give us a possibility to play through Dream Troll, though. It's tough. The Wandering Emperor with this is actually pretty important because we can't just, like, force them to tap it by frying anymore. They can, in theory, just keep ticking up on it. Um, they can also now attack the Chantry down. But we're kind of looking at all right, we're going to try and Fable plus Fanatic and Mogus our way through this game. I was not ready for Dream Trawler, I'll be honest. This might be rough.
Yeah, from their perspective, there's no reason not to just do this. It's a kill challenge to go back to 16. Yeah. Jeez. More than that, actually. I kind of want to kill the Wandering Emperor here, and I still might do so if they don't make it to Fairy this turn. We can't really team up to kill us anymore. No, well. We found it to Fairy. There's so many cars. Let's get rid of that, because that's another way to draw. Oh, no. How are we getting through Dream Trawler? I don't think... Because we can't keep the Challengers alive. We can go Challenger plus uh, Fanatic. Okay. Well, that may, well, that may, be, that may be helps us, maybe it doesn't. Um, we definitely don't want one of these. Uh... They also still have that further room. I think I'm gonna discard this. Okay. Um... We have to go face here. Still don't know what other interaction they have. We can make castle tokens too. Ooh, we are in a tough spot. We're in a tough spot. That was a down of 13. We can go... We can't go Fnatic and Fable, unfortunately. I think if we go Challenger this turn... If this resolves, I can just attack it, right? But... The thinking is, is that we go Chandra at Mogus now, maximize that damage on the Mogus. Then they have to, th that forces the attack into Chandra this turn. Um, which in turn... <laughs> this is kind of playing like they don't have anything. Um, but I think that's kind of the spot we're in. In turn... Buys us more time to kind of assemble Fable plus... Uh, Oh. Fable plus, I guess. Fable plus Fanatic. We'll see. We have a bit going on on our hands still. But like, they're, again, they're going to gain a ton of life. We're going to game up. Us knowing that they have Dream Controller here is, is, is important. Yeah, they go up to 15. What else do they have? Alright, well, nothing yet. I think I just want to go, like, Swiss Beer plus Fable. And we're committing, like... No, it is why we're committing hard to the board, but we kind of just have to play it. They just... have nothing. I'm not going to attack with the Fnatic. Just in case they have, like, another Wandering Emperor. I'm also not attacking the Wandering Emperor. Um. Deluge. Sure. We need to maximize base damage so that we can... Look to end with Fnatic. Again, they're gonna gain a ton here. We've bought like a little bit of time with Chandra. Like this is currently only like one, two, three, five, six. So I should play. It actually says five. Oh, it's because it's convert a mana cost. This is not got a mana cost on it. But it is, it's convert a mana cost three. It's not got the the backside devotion show. Okay. So I'm gonna go up to like 19. Yeah, we are dead next turn. Very well. 
Yeah, we have to play out they have absolutely nothing. You have Ramadan Prudence or Down on the Bubbear Attack. Then 19. If they just have like a set of the wreckage also, this is obviously just, just lights out. The post combat, they have eight cards in hand. I have a temporary lockdown. That's pretty good. The treasure gets eaten anyway. I mean, lose a lot here. Oh, wait, do we want the land? Uh, so land lets us copy fanatic activate. We don't, we don't if we don't kill them this time. What do we need? We have red, red. So, it, assuming they don't feel to ruin us, land lets us go make a copy of this. It's them for one, two, three. Down to 14. Attack for 8. This makes an attack for 11, 12. Still not good enough. Don't know what we're drawing towards here. Uh, we can't create blockers for this. And absorb. Sure. Uh, we get to do this. You get to draw for turn, draw for uh, attack, and then also draw to fairy. So I think. Oh, we could kill to fairy, right? They need to find one more draw. Oh, they can plus on the. Get plus wandering emperor, right? Eight, nine, ten. We'll play, we'll play through it. They have priority right now because I can pitch a card to Dream Trawler, I think. That's why this is slowed down. I don't think there's anything I actually do. Alright. Oh, maybe I could have put maybe I could have picked up the planeswalkers earlier. They'd be on such a higher life total though. I do regret not killing the Wonder Emperor. Um that way I can actually tell me had a chance. To fry it. End up like, obviously they ended up having a second to fairy anyway. Yeah, we just did here. Um alright, alright, alright. Uh sure. Uh far as again, I think like this is what we're what we're rolling with. Um maybe we do want the extra fanatic? I don't think we want the extra fanatic. I think our, our best chance to win the game is like one drop, two drop fable. Versus blue white. We'll see. This time we get to be on the play, which again changes things. A little. Uh, this hand's a bit awkward. Four lands, double soul scum age. Uh, we're playing off the top here. We'll look into six. What's that going to look like? Oh, so I think we just kind of have to keep. Keep and hope we draw spells for the rest of the game. Oh well. Most of the rest of the game. They've mulliganed. I can hear it, it sounds great. You just need like another card. We need like one more spell. This wasn't what we were looking for, but they've shown temporary lockdown. Um but there were hands played out. I'm gonna make both of these and hopefully we have like a fable this time. And that makes it look a bit better. Or or any spell. Uh Den of the Bugbear's not doing us any favours. Right the second. 
We got it down though. Like if they temporary lockdown here, we get to untap Mate Chandra, which looks pretty good on the face of it. But they're still at quite a high life total. And like Chandra Switch of Defiance is good, but it's not quite what it used to be. To be sure. Okay. They don't have a temporary lockdown. Make attacks here. I'm just going to say go rather than jam this temp uh, the Chandra into open mana. The next turn we can start activating the down of the bug bear. Um, and kind of forces them to have to deal with Soul Scar Mages. Now, if they Supreme Verdict's here, I'll make the challenge true. But, um, we shall see, we shall see. Plus, now they are also at Wandering Emperor Mana. Uh, challenger makes this a bit more interesting, because obviously that lets us present a bit more damage to... I don't want to show another Ramonite Prince. If I can help it. There's like we're triggering so many prowess triggers here. Again, we're pressuring them out. That's gonna resolve. We'll just um I've never crushed a wedding like this before. Uh I think this time we should just pick up. All right, so do have a Wandering Emperor. I should have definitely waited. I should maybe just waited before activating this. Obviously, this feels a little silly, but this is... Okay. So now... We're at 10. 5. I'm going to get down tick. Which allow... Ooh, maybe they have another one. Yeah, let's say go. The next boss is actually kind of sneaky here. Um, one, two, six, four, right? Six, four. Get animate. Big cast chance. I should just be zeroing this. <laughs> um sorry, should you just be I saw the card. Again, Prowess Trigger, if they have a counter spell, fair enough, we can attack over this. If they don't, then we'll just down to common token. Again, a bit awkward if they have a, another Wandering Emperor, which given they sack the first one, isn't that unlikely, but even so, we're going to be left with a few Planeswalkers in play. Uh, I should have into actually the, the worst possible, because that will also pick off the... Uh, Bullshit Defiance. If it wants to attack here, like they're on eight, all of a sudden, like. Okay. Hey. Damage is adding up. We've got two coppers around that ruins. Oh, gosh. I think this is where the Gym Caller comes in. Um. I just don't think we can beat that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Gene Trill is pretty lockout. But if we had a fry this turn just to tap it, potentially. But uh, yeah. They have another way to draw a card.
right now. Where am I, friends? We have five cows in hand as well. Okay, so we have. We've hit nothing but lands, actually, I realize. Bruh. Okay. There, there's double field of ruin for these as well. Which is literally everything to go right. Maybe I should have, uh, yeah, I should have animated one of these to attack as well, just to bait the Fiddler out. Uh, we will, we will concede. Yeah, that's tough, that's tough. Yeah, Dreamfall is really good. Really good. Really, really good. Alright, well, that's for the video. Hope you've enjoyed. Bit of a different take on Mono Red, bit of a fun take on Mono Red, bit of a sweet take on Mono Red. Still pretty good. Still pretty good. Um, especially versus other like aggro or like red decks so hey if you enjoyed please do like subscribe all that good stuff if you got a deck you want to see me play let me know in the comments other than that for actually around the corner it should be a good time peace soup take care have a great day thanks for watching